today I'm going to show you how to curve sketch. Uh, so the aim of the tutorial is going to show you how to find the X and the Y intercepts, also how to find the turning points and the nature of the turning points, and then actually to sketch the function. So this is our function here, Y equals X squared brackets 8 minus X squared. Now, you might see it written like that. You could also see it written like this. f of x equals x squared 8 minus x squared. They are both mean exactly the same. It's just different ways of writing functions. First of all, we'll find out when it touches the x-axis. So step one, it touches the x-axis when y equals 0. So here we have our function that we're going to make y equal to 0 and then we'll be able to find it where when it touches the x-axis equals 0. So there's two times this would equal 0. It's going to be when x squared equals 0 or when 8 minus x squared equals 0. So we'll write at those. x squared could equal 0 and the other option is when 8 minus x squared equals 0. Uh, this obviously just simplifies just to 0, so x is 0, and also this you can solve as x squared equals 8, which means that x is equal to the square root of 8. And again, just remember that when you're doing the square root, you've got a plus and a negative answer. You could work out the exact value for that, so, or, or you could write it out in third notation, like you could simplify it to uh, 2 root 2, but it, you might as well just leave it like that, and there's no point in converting it to a decimal. So we know now from this that it touches the x-axis at the origin, 0, 0, and also at root 8, 0, and the other one would be minus root 8. So those are the three points of contact with the x-axis. The second part, we're going to, or the second step, we're going to now find out when about it touches the y-axis. So it touches the y-axis when x equals 0. So again, our function is y equals x squared brackets 8 minus x squared. If x is going to be 0, I replace all these x's with 0, and we end up with 0 squared times 8 minus 0 squared. And 0 times anything is just going to be 0, so that means it touches when y is 0, which means it touches the y-axis at 0, 0 which is what you'd expect because the it touched the x-axis at 0, 0, so that's the same place. It's also touching the y-axis at that point as well, so that's why those two are exactly the same. But that is not always going to be the case. The next step, we've got to find the turning points. Yeah, I need a bit of paper for this. So the turning points, or the stationary points. Turning points occur when dy by dx equals 0. Now, if you're using the other notation, in instead of using instead of using uh, y, you're using f of x, then you could have written the stationary points or the turning points occur when f dashed x equals 0. So we've got to differentiate our function, and this is our function here, x squared 8 minus x squared. Now we can't not differentiate that yet. We've first of all get it, got to get it ready for differentiation. So to get it ready for differenti differentiation, we multiply out the brackets. Now we can differentiate it. So you multiply by the power. That's going to give you 16, and then you take away 1 from the power, so it'll just leave you 16x. Multiply by the power, it's going to be 4x, 
then take away one to the take away one from the power will give you x cubed. So the turning points occur when this here equals zero. To solve this, we can factorize. The common factor of 16x and 4x cubed is 4x, and we're left with 4 minus x squared. We can then factorize this part again because that's the difference of two squares. And now from this, we can work out what the turning points are going to be. It can equal zero if this part was zero. And it can also equal zero if this part in here was zero. And lastly, it can equal zero if the two plus x equals zero. So from that, we can see that x can equal zero, x could equal two, and also x equals minus two. Now with these, these are the x coordinates of the turning points, you have now got to work out the y coordinate of the turning point. And to do that, you substitute these values into the original function. So you're going to put the 0 into here, and you'll get the y value. So when I put 0 into here, that again will be 0. When I put 2 into this function, it's going to be 2 squared, 8 minus 2 squared, so that's going to give you 8. No, it's not. It's going to give you, let's see again, it's going to be uh, 4, so it's going to be 16. And then lastly, the minus 2, when you put that in, it's going to give you minus 2 squared is 4, and then minus 2 squared here again is 4, so again, it's going to give you 16 again. So we know the turning points occur at 0, 0, 2, 16, and also at minus 2, 16. Oops, you can't see any of that. There we go. So there's the turning points for that function. Now, to step four, what we've got to do is work out whether it's a maximum or a minimum at each of these different points. Or it could be a rising point of inflection, or it could be a falling point of inflection. And to do that, we need to use a, a table of signs, or some people call it a nature table. So let's put table of signs. So this is going to be the x values along the top there. Then I want to know what happens to the gradient for those x values. And underneath that, I want to know what the slope is going to be. So we're going to look at each of these values of x from 0, 2, and minus 2. So you want to write them in order. So it goes minus 2, 0, and then 2. And again, we just want to put little lines down here. So we're going to look at values just before the minus 2, and then just after it. So first of all, what happens just before the x? So we want to work out what's going to happen to the gradient below minus 2. So we could try the number, for example, minus 3. Now, when we put minus 3 into the derived function dy by dx, now just to remind you what dy by dx is, it was uh, 16x minus 4x cubed. Now, again, you could pick any value that's less than minus 2, but uh, I'm going to pick minus 3 here. So if I put minus 3 into here, our answer is going to be a negative number. And the reason for that, that's, uh, no, it's not it's going to be a positive number because that's going to give you this here, x cubed will be um, minus 3 cubed, it's going to be minus 27. Minus 27 times 4 is going to be uh, uh, 80, 81 or something like that, no, 100, I don't, I don't know what it is, it's going, to be, it's going to be a big number. And then you've got to do uh, 16 times minus 3. And so but when you add that together, this will be, let's just work it out exactly. So it's going to be 16 times minus 3. Take away 4 times, in brackets, minus 3 cubed. 
and it gives you plus 60. So that means we, oh, we don't write down 60, we just write it as a fact, as a positive. That's why it's called a table of science, because we only want to know if it's positive. And that means that basically every single gradient that we look at that is below minus 2 will be a positive gradient. If you put minus 2 into here, we'll get 0, because that's where a turning point occurs. Now, you want to look at a number in between minus 2 and 0. So uh, a, a good one for that would be obviously minus 1. So you sub minus 1 into your derived function. And when you put that in, you'll get minus 16, and then it'll be plus 4. So it's going to be a negative number. So again, just pop in the fact that it's negative. Don't worry about the value. It's negative. So, so far, we know that the slope will go up like this. That's a positive gradient. Then it levels off for the turning point, and then it comes back down again. The next value, when x is 0, again, we'll get it levels off again when x is 0. So that's going to be a nice level bit there. When it goes in between 0 and 2, just pick a number, any number between 0 and 2, and I'm going to pick 1. So when you put 1 into this derived function, we get 16 minus 4, which again is a positive answer. So it goes up like that, positive gradient. When x is 2, again, it should be 0, otherwise we've done things wrong because that's where it's turning, so the gradient is 0. And then just after 2, so for example 3, if I put 3 into here, I'll end up with 16 times 3 minus 4 times 3 cubed, and again, that will give us a negative gradient. So to finish off, that is what our curve is going to look like. It'll be a maximum, then down to minimum, and then back up to maximum. Now, just some things that might happen here. Sometimes you, when you do these curve sketchings, you get a, a positive, then levels off, and then another positive. And if, if you get that, that basically means it's a rising point of inflection. Okay, so sometimes you do get that. You could also get a falling point of inflection, like it could be a minus, then another minus, so that would be a falling point of uh, inflection. But here we've just got maximums and minimums. So to finish off, we just write down what we know. We know that it's a maximum and it's a maximum at minus 216. We know it's a minimum at 0, 0. And this last one here, we know again it's a maximum at 216. So we've got the turning points. We've got the nature of the turning points. And also we have got the where it cuts the x and the y axis. The last thing we're going to do now is to sketch it. And to sketch it, we have to make sure that we annotate the graph. And what I mean by annotating it is you've got to make sure you've got all the numbers on there that you have calculated in your previous bits of work in. So first of all, get a nice set of axes, label it x and y. We know that there's a turning point at 0, 0, so put a cross there. And we also know it's a minimum there, so put, you can put what you just put like a little curve there to show you know it's going to be turning that way. We know that it's going to be a maximum at minus 216. So again, just put a little curve so we know it's going to be turning that way. And that's minus 216. So that's me annotating the graph by putting that on. And again, if we, on the other side, we've got another turning point, which is at 216. So try and make that look as symmetrical as possible. And again, that's another maximum. And lastly, we know where it touches the x-axis. We touch that 0, uh, sorry, minus root 8, and also at root 8. So that's all the information we need. Now, if we just sketch our our curve, it's going to look like this. Make it as nice and smooth as possible. And that is the curve sketch of y equals x squared 8 minus x squared. Okay, I hope that helped you with your curve sketching.